So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Francesco. I'm from Red Hat and I work in Red Hat High High CEO team and I'm specifically part of TOT, which is a project focused on a recommender system for AI software stack. Uh, today I will talk about uh, graph neural networks. So this is a different type from the traditional one because they focus on a specific structured data, which are the graph. And you will see why this is so important today, especially because you have uh, many types of graph everywhere. So social networks, uh, knowledge graphs, and many types of graph, which contain many useful information information that we want to use <coughs> in neural networks. So I will not be too mathematical. I will not use too much math uh, because I know it's uh, quite late. So this is the agenda for today. I will briefly introduce neural network graph, so the basic components for graph neural networks, and then we will go a little bit more into the details. So. Um, we will try to answer this simple question. So what is a neural network? Uh, what are the graph? Uh, neural networks are also graph. Yes, actually. Uh, deep neural networks and graph deep neural networks. So um, neural networks is a very broad uh, topic. It will take, I think, a month to explain all of them. But I will try to do that in few slides. So. Um, First of all, from a general overview, uh, we have the artificial intelligence domain. So you have robotics and other fields. Then we have a subdomain, which is the machine learning one. So in machine learning, we try to uh, teach the machine a specific task using a different class of methods. We have a supervised one, uh, unsupervised one, and uh, reinforcement learning. Then if we go a, a layer deeper, we have the neural networks, which can be adopted in different classes. So you can use them in supervised, unsupervised, also in reinforcement learning. And this type of neural networks are one type of approach that you can use uh, in machine learning. Uh, the last layer is the deep learning. So deep learning is when we basically use these neural networks with many, many uh, layers to learn uh, um, deeper knowledge of the uh, of the data set so yeah, let's start with uh, uh, an analogy so first of all we know that uh, neural networks are inspired by the most uh, efficient and powerful machine existing which is the brain uh, here we see on the right corner on the right uh, on the right corner that uh, you have dendritis which is a uh, basically receiving some signals, and this goes into the cell body, which is processing uh, the signals, and the output is uh, sent to the other uh, neurons. As an analogy, we have the artificial neurons, which receive uh, basically different inputs as numbers, and this, um, this will be processed somehow and with uh, some weights and biases in order to produce uh, some output. So this is the general uh, way how the neurons has been, uh, the artificial neurons have been inspired. Um, but of course, this output uh, takes many inputs, and uh, it needs to be uh, bound somehow. Otherwise, the output could be between minus infinite and plus infinite. So this is why we, uh, how do we decide if the neuron is uh, activated or is fired? We use uh, activation function. So this activation function gives you a range in which the um, the neuron can be fired or not. And there are several types of uh, activation function and these activation functions are different depending on the architecture and uh, for computational uh, uh, purposes and performances these are also different types um, so we know how the single neuron works so now we go to the uh, neural network, so we put together many types of neurons, and typically this is from the input to the output, you go uh, from left to right, so the, the data uh, flow in uh, something called uh, feed-forward uh, propagation, because you go from the left to the, to the right in feed-forward, and then for each neural network you can have uh, input layers, hidden layers, and output layer. In deep neural network you will have much more hidden layers, and this is how the general structure of our neural networks uh, appear. But uh, how does it actually learn? 
So in order to, let's say, train a model, we need uh, some data set. So the data set is, let's say, one of the fundamental uh, part in uh, machine learning and how to uh, basically train the model in order to uh, predict uh, for some specific application. Then we need an algorithm able to uh, give you the, let's say, the weights and the biases. And uh, how do we uh, quantify if the algorithm is uh, getting to the right performances? We define a cost function, and we minimize this cost function using an algorithm, which is typically the gradient descent. Um, this is a uh, very simple way to explain how they work. So of course, in practice, there are more complex uh, things to consider. Uh, there are hyperparameters. There is uh, learning rates and uh, other issues that you need to deal with when you train a model. But this is, for the sake of this uh, talk, this is just what we need to know at the moment. And just to give you a little uh, uh, comparison again with the, with the brain, we know that uh, artificial neural networks are different from the brain in the sense that uh, in terms of size, it's said that uh, the brain is around uh, 300,000 uh, 300, trillion of neurons. But artificial neural networks are much less because of uh, uh, computational uh, purposes and uh, limitation of the machines. Uh, in terms of speed, the neural networks, uh, uh, the artificial ones, are, of course, uh, depending on the power that you have of your machine, while the one of the brain uh, depends on the age, on the gender, or many other factors. The training algorithm for the neural networks, uh, for the artificial neurons, are uh, the gradient descent, while for the brain, we still don't know, actually. Uh, the power consumption for the brain is uh, quite uh, low, but uh, for artificial neural network, actually, depends. You can have uh, training models using many GPUs and many uh, machines, so this is quite uh, demanding in terms of power. Uh, the field of application, uh, the artificial neural networks are focused on a specific task, while the brain can actually deal with many tasks and can learn very easily other things. And regarding the signals, as we saw at the beginning, the comparison, the analogy between the two, they act more or less in, the, in a similar way. But uh, this is just to show that that uh, we are still far from uh, mimic the behavior of the brain, but uh, we are closing the gap. Uh, we will close the gap in the future, probably. So um, I show just a simple uh, neural uh, architecture uh, in, um, until now, but uh, nowadays we have many type of architectures. I will not go through all of them, but uh, I will show you some very uh, famous and most used one for many applications like image recognition or natural language processing. This is convolutional networks. Convolutional networks are used to extract uh, uh, local um, um, features that can be uh, Common to the across all the data set, and uh, typically they work uh, very well for for uh, uh, different tasks. Of course, sometimes they can they can also uh, fail. For example, in like in this case. Um, there are other type of architecture like uh, recurrent neural networks, which are used for uh, basically for when we need to have uh, uh, loops in the neurons that uh, will mimic how to have some uh, memory in the in the recurrent ne in the neural network. So to remember some context, this is important, especially for application with uh, machine translation and uh, text in general. Um, so I could go. I will stop here. Related um, regarding the neural networks, we could go ahead. But uh, for this is what we need to know until now. So now we will move to the graph part. Um, so the graph are basically spread in many or almost all sectors. We can find uh, some example with graphs. In general, what is a graph? A graph is a type of data structure which is made by nodes and edges. These nodes could contain uh, entities or some specific uh, uh, object. And edges will represent instead the connection between uh, these nodes uh, or these entities. There are many types of uh, um, graphs that we can classify in different ways. For, for example, we have direct and indirect uh, graphs. So, uh, indirect graph can be uh, basically traversed in many directions, while the direct graph will follow a precise path. 
the graph can be weighted or labeled, so you can have uh, several type of numbers or you can have uh, strings, but uh, in general they can be uh, very different and uh, the approach to um, work on this graph can be also quite uh, complex and different with respect to the simple ones. Uh, they can be planar or non-planar. If uh, we put basically a graph on the on the plane on a 2D space, you can see that uh, the edges are not crossing. Then in that case, it's a planar uh, graph. Otherwise, it's a non-planar graph. Um, the, the graphs can be dense or sparse. Dense is basically depending on the ratio between the uh, number of edges and the vertices. Um, homogeneous and heterogeneous if the type of nodes and, ver and vertices and uh, edges are similar. Uh, static or dynamic if the um, the graph is uh, actually changing in time. For example, if it's uh, for a social network, something uh, the graph is dynamic because it's changing in time. Um, but how do we deal with uh, this graph uh, from um, for in, in computational uh, words? So there are some type of matrices. This is very simple math. So we consider three nodes, for example, and we can we can construct these matrices, this matrix that basically uh, map how the nodes are connected between between each other. You can easily identify how many edges and which edges are connected between the nodes. Um, the degree matrix is a diagonal matrix. I show here as a single vector, but uh, uh, you can see that uh, basically it tells you uh, how many edges are for each node. And there is another uh, matrix well uh, known that is used uh, especially in, uh, in dealing with graphs. And this is basically the difference between the diagonal matrix and the other the adjacency matrix that I showed before. And this is a list of examples. So graphs, we can find graphs basically everywhere. And uh, in other language processing, social network, you can see that uh, they cover almost uh, every type of sector. And this type of data are produced in many companies. So this is very important. And this is a problem that uh, we need to deal with. Um, so uh, now I will go a bit uh, into deep into the graph neural networks. Now we have we should have the basic uh, background, let's say, to understand how the graph neural network works. So first of all, let's uh, focus on the motivation, why we went from the, from the traditional neural networks to the graph neural networks. So first of all, it's from a data perspective. So most of the traditional neural networks will deal with the Euclidean data. And so we, we, we find images, numbers, text, audio. This is something that we are dealing uh, today with most of the traditional neural networks. But there is another class of data which are, called, which are called non Euclidean data. And this type of data requires a different types of uh, approach in order to be dealt, dealt with. So you find uh, basically all the graph structures, trees, networks, manifolds. And non Euclidean data is uh, actually a upper uh, set of the graphs. So the graphs are, um, are part of this, da this data, but there are approaches which are called uh, geometric deep learning. So this is the set above the graph neural networks. Um, no, sorry. The second reason is related to the graph embeddings. So there are typically three approaches that you can use in order to embed the networks. So embedding networks means to move from the graph, uh, basically from the nodes, from the edges, to a two-dimensional vector. And uh, once you move to the two-dimensional vector, you can basically apply all the other conventional uh, uh, neural networks. But what we wanted, what uh, the graph want to do is to basically use this representation Representation networks, and most of the new neural networks are basically based on the, on the, on the graph embeddings. And the third reason is uh, basically related to the human brain. So we want to go, a st a st we want to get a step closer to mimic what the brain is going to do. So we need to start to deal with the, these types of uh, of data. Um, so. 
description of the graph neural network. So graph neural networks are one type of geometric deep learning. As I said, ge geometric deep learning is the uh, domain uh, that deals with all the non the non Euclidean data. But graph is one subset of these uh, uh, particular approaches. And what we can actually learn with the graph, so these are the typical uh, uh, type of problems that you can uh, ask when you want to use graphs. So you want to predict uh, node classification, which basically means that you have a graph with uh, some nodes which are labeled and some nodes which are unlabeled, and you want to predict uh, what is the label related to, uh, to these nodes. And this is important for many fields. As you can see, there is uh, predicting preferences for user uh, in a social, ne social network or to predict a customer if they should get a loan or not. Um, the second uh, type of problems that you can have is a link prediction. So you want to find uh, basically hidden connection between uh, uh, vertices. And this is very important for recommender systems in different uh, uh, fields. Uh, community detection, or they also call cluster detection. So if you want to identify some cluster inside the graph, and that can be basically uh, cluster together. So if they have similarities for certain nodes and uh, you want to discover some uh, specific uh, cluster inside, and this is very important if you have uh, very huge graphs. And this is also uh, used in a social network or for websites. Um, graph and subgraph classification. So if you want to classify graph, um, this can be important for many uh, applications. As you see, there is also images because the graph are are a upper set of the also the Euclidean data. So you can map also images to graph. Um, so this is an extension of what you can do with the um, with the graph. Um, regarding methods and applications, so the core problem of the of the graph neural network is how to deal with the representation of the graph in a way that they can be used in a machine learning model, basically. And here is the main idea. So as I said before, we're talking about graph embeddings. If we focus on one of the problem I said, is, which is a node uh, classification, this is what is what is done in a node embedding. So typically, you have uh, for each node, you can uh, build uh, some. Uh, here, I don't know. You cannot see, it, but for each of these nodes, you can build a computational graph. You can aggregate this. Uh, uh, this graph for each of the node, and basically you can have a simple representation of all the graph for a one targeted node. So the idea is similar, and what actually was done is to start to consider uh, aggregation function for all the nodes, then to define a loss function, as uh, I showed at the beginning how a neural network works, and basically to put there in the middle a neural network. So then you train on a set of nodes, so you decide which nodes you will use for your training model, and then you will test them uh, with the other nodes. And finally, you can generate embeddings for the new nodes. So the core uh, um, problem on how to define the graph neural network is deeply related to, the, to how you define the, the aggregation function. Um, so regarding a bit of history, the graph neural networks are quite new, I would say, with respect to the other type of neural network, the traditional neural networks. And they were born basically in 2005. Um, this is just a little uh, steps that they were using, uh, initializing a random embedding for each node. And uh, they were using some uh, constraint uh, uh, algorithm to, to iterate on all these nodes. But this has some limitation that has to be overcome uh, later on. And you see that there is a gap of uh, quite uh, many years before moving forward, because they were mostly focusing on the, the Euclidean data. And so the solution was to use uh, one of the type of uh, recurrent neural network applied to the graph neural network. And, you, and this was a huge improvement 
Um, the other, at the same time, uh, there was starting to move from the convolution neural network, start to be applied on the graph. So what I showed at the beginning for the images which are in 2D can be also, it was extended to the use of graphs. And this led to the uh, creation of new types of neural networks for graph, which were based on the convolution networks. And this was basically from now on, there will be like 20 or 30 papers every year since 2017, which are focused on new type of approaches. And most of them comes from applying what we learn in traditional neural networks. And we now we are applying them in the graph neural networks. So how do, do we distinguish most of the graph neural network, as I said, is uh, mainly related to the how do we aggregate the neighborhood uh, function. And uh, this is basically all the graph that you can find uh, uh, nowadays. So most of them are uh, distinguished because of the aggregation step that they take. And then you have uh, maybe uh, you have some uh, update function which are specific for each of the of the methods. But as you can see, there are all the traditional ones. So you can find convolution network, gated uh, graph neural network. All of them take some ideas from the traditional one. And. Regarding the application of the graph neural network, well, they can be applied almost uh, in all the domain that we saw for the traditional one. The advantage is that we have the use of graph, which have a semantic relationship between the nodes and the, um, and can give much more information and in the in the representation. Uh, so you can see here, for example, how you can deal with the images in the in the graphs. Um, text uh, in almost every field uh, in labeling uh, neural machine translation they have been they start to be applied almost uh, in all the domain that you have in traditional ones uh, physics so here is very important especially for the type of because here the data are especially graphs for molecules and uh, um, all that is related with biology and also in combinatorial optimization, they were used with the salesman problem. They are starting to try to use also the graph neural networks and on knowledge graph and the graph generation. Uh, related to the, this is the last point. So what are the issue at the moment? And uh, you can, we can see that there are some related to the structure, so not we cannot use the same number of layers, for example, for the graph uh, convolutional network applied to the graph neural networks, because there are some uh, um, problem with the uh, over smoothing, and uh, this needs to be deal with the other type of neural networks. Scalability, there is not just a, a generalization for the in the in the scale of the let's say new type of graph which deal with very big uh, uh, sizes. Uh, heterogeneity, so most of the graph neural networks are based on the uh, assumption that the graphs are homogeneous, so that you have similar type of nodes and similar type of uh, edges. Um, there's still a big uh, open uh, uh, point in research is the dynamic graph, how, so how to deal with graphs which uh, change in time. Uh, interpretability, which is also something that uh, we're dealing with the traditional neural network. And there is still not a consistent theoretical framework, so there is not a precise way to say that we have to use this kind of uh, neural networks on uh, some specific application. So conclusion, uh, graphs are basically spread everywhere. We can have, uh, we can find data uh, based on graph um, in uh, every application. We can use graph also in, with machine learning and they can be applied in many tasks. We are taking a little step closer to mimic the human brain and uh, there are still some open points which, uh, uh, which are open uh, in research at the moment. And that's it.
nice talk, but I had a question regarding training the neural net. So I'm assuming this is trained using backdrop. So uh, uh, is there any uh, care taken that there are no loops in the graph? So that how does backdrop even work? Doesn't it go in loops and the gradient blowing up and things like that? Does it? How do training this network actually work? So. The idea is uh, to use the, the the core problem is how to represent the graphs in a way that we can insert in a machine learning problem. So what I show is uh, how to define this aggregation function in order to uh, move from the space of the graph to the space that can be applied in traditional neural networks. And the most of the initially the algorithm was different from the back propagation, but then thanks to the new architecture, you can apply basically the traditional uh, uh, gradient descent problem also in the graph neural networks. Assume that there are no loops, as in uh, while you're. What, what do you mean there are no loops? Uh, as in the entire network, is, is there any loop inside the like? It, it's a graph, right? Do, do you ensure that there are no cycles in the graph? Uh, well, there are, of course, uh, some of the graph are, um, some of the assumption is that the graph uh, can be like uh, um, uh, homogeneous and uh, there are no cycle inside the, the graph. So there are still some limitation, of course, for some type of graph. Um, so there is this uh, assumption still that uh, needs to be dealt with. Thank you.